Hi, I'm Mario Batali, and welcome to Batali Cooks 4. Today's ingredients were selected by Monica Harris from Fredrickson, Washington, and the ingredients are zucchini, green onions or scallions, goat cheese, and basil. Sounds like a fritter to me. So we're gonna make almost like a little hash brown made out of zucchini. So the trick is get smaller as opposed to larger zucchini. I take off the end, and then on a box grater or in a food processor, you just shred it up. It doesn't take a lot of work, so I generally don't mess up the food processor because I'm allergic to cleaning, although I'm really good at it. And I'm gonna take two zucchini, and these are medium small. The reason you choose medium and small is because there's a little less of the seed pocket volume. Now you could do this with yellow squash, you could do this with acorn squash. Once you master a recipe like this, the only thing that limits you is your imagination and the quality of produce in your store. So I'm gonna take the zucchini just like so. I'm gonna season it with a little salt and just let it sit there for a second because that salt's gonna start drawing out the liquid and I like that. Then we're gonna take some scallions and slice them, not too thin. I like them to be able to have a textural component to the dish. And we're gonna take about six scallions I'm gonna throw the scallions right on top. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a quarter cup of flour and I'm gonna to toss it through so they're completely mixed. I'm trying to almost coat the zucchini and the scallions with the flour so that when it meets the goat cheese and the eggs, it will bind consistently and evenly. Now here we have goat ricotta or goat curd. You could use regular ricotta, you could use soft goat cheese, you could use any kind of grated cheese for that matter, but I like the tanginess of this goat cheese. And we're gonna add about two thirds of a cup. Then I'm gonna take some garlic, and I love to use my little microplane here to get the garlic completely, finely grated up. Because then I'm gonna get that garlic flavor without ever biting into a piece of garlic. So now garlic, two eggs, a little grating of fresh black pepper and the zest of one lemon. The zest has all of the essential oils and packs the biggest punch as well as adding just a little textural almost leatherness to it that I love in the final product here. And then the basil at the last second, I'm just going to take a big bunch, and the French would call this chiffonade, the Italians would just call it tritato. And I'm not trying to make it too fancy, and even leaving a couple of bigger pieces in there isn't bad because it's that whimsical caprice that makes things delicious in the Italian world. And it's because we're not so obsessed about it being too smooth or too small, but it's just a little bit more, I guess you would call it rustic. It's not lazy though, because there's a big difference between lazy and rustic. So now you mix this up, and because there's no leavening, you could make this in advance. You could even make the batter in the morning and then just fry them to order. What you wouldn't want to do is fry them and then try to cool them down and then reheat them. The kind of crispy edge thing would no longer be there. No bueno. Now, I've got a pan. I've got extra virgin olive oil. That's probably almost a half cup. I'm gonna put it on high and let it come up until you can just see it smoking. Now when it's just about smoking, I'm gonna take two spoons and go just like this. One, just sizzling in the corner. Two, whenever I cook, I never do things in even numbers. It's important to be odd in every way. So I'm not gonna put one in the middle, but I'm gonna put five around kind of the outside. Now I'm not gonna pat these or squeeze them or squish them down at all. What I'm gonna do is just give it a little bit of movement like that. And then the most important thing to do, put the stuff in and let it be. 
Don't go all Iron Chef on it. Don't try to move it around. Just let it sit there and cook so that it sets a little bit. So then when you turn it over, you're really only turning it over once. So then flip. 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 Now, don't press them. Resist. Just want to do this and that. Now once they've been flipped, I give them a nice little bang of freshly cracked, quite fine black pepper. And then while they're sitting there, I take another lemon and I grate the zest right on top. What that does, it also hits a little zest into the pan and creates a delicious kind of lemony roasty fragrance to the kitchen, but also to the dish that's cooking. Now you can't overcook these, but you can undercook them. You want to make sure that they get nice and golden brown on both sides, or on at least a side and a half. Right before they come out of the pan, I hit them with a little Malden salt. I love this Malden salt because it has an excellent crunchy texture and a slightly lower salinity. So that's my finishing salt on almost all the dishes I do. And then to take them to the plate, I just with my hands, set them down in a straight line. One more little bit of the salt and the lemon. I'll put a little puddle of olive oil right there and a little bit of the salt and a little bit of the pepper and serve it like that.